What is up YouTube? My name is Buddy Blues and welcome to another how to series. Today we look at compressors and I feel like compressors are very, very misunderstood. Fun fact, the compressor pedal is what got me into pedals. I have been playing guitar for about 17 years and I never used pedals throughout those 17 years until the last two or three years now. And the compressor is the reason I got into it first, which brings us to the very first reason of why you need a compressor. I was having problems with my high E string on strats. Whenever I was on stage, I could never really hear that high E string. I know it sounds wild, but I could never really hear it in a context of a chord, for example, in a context of a solo. Like whenever I'm playing it alone with overdrive, sure, but in a context of a chord or a solo or an open string, I could never quite hear it. Which brings us to what a compressor actually does. In the most simplest of terms, the compressor takes everything that's too high, every noise that's too high, brings it down, and everything that's too low and brings it up. It basically compresses the signal and it makes everything even. So why would you want that? Aside from the example that I just gave you with the high E string on a Strat or anything really with single coils, another thing is where you sit in a mix. Now, if you're a bedroom player, you may not want a compressor to, to stand out or to, or to fit in a mix better. But if you're playing with a band or you're playing with the backing tracks, there are a lot of noises we guitarists make that you don't really want there. Suppose you're playing a passage like this, for example. Now I'm gonna play that same passage with a little bit of compressor added. You hear how, I don't know why I turned it off. You hear how my upstrokes are not as annoying as they were in the beginning. So here's with the compressor again. Here's without. It's just more even when I play with the compressor. So for rhythm guitar, for example, which is what we're playing 80% of the time, if you think about it, it's not just solos. I find the compressor quite important because it's gonna level everything out that I'm doing. No matter how sturdy your hand is, now even if you're Corey Wong, Corey Wong uses a compressor. No matter how steady that right hand is, you are bound to, if it's human, you are bound to make a downstroke that's harder than an upstroke or an upstroke that's harder than a downstroke. And it's just, LOL, and it's just going to really be obvious. And in a, in, in a mix, it'll pop out and you don't want that. Another reason why people are usually deterred away from or they just, just shy away from the idea of a compressor is because they think that the compressor adds noise. Well, this compressor is very noisy. What if I told you that that's impossible? If you're getting a quality compressor, which I'm using today, I'm using today the LPD CLE 304, which is the review on that not long ago. If you're using a quality compressor, and this isn't a commercial for LPD. Uh, Jackson Audio Bloom makes an incredible compressor. Wampler Ego is an incredible compressor. So anyway, a good quality compressor does not add anything. It doesn't. There's no way a good compressor, it's physically impossible that a good compressor would add noise. What it's doing is, like we said at the beginning of the video, all the highs are being brought down and all the lows are being brought up. That what sits on the floor, the Noise, noise floor, right? Noise. So I have a, I have a single strat, uh, single strat. I have a six, oh my God. I've got my SATA coil here with single coil pickups. It is bound to be noisy. So here's the compressor off. We hear that. Sure, you touch the ground and stuff like that, it goes away. You put it in here where it's uh, hum canceling and it goes away. So when I add the compressor, right now the compressor's off. If I add the compressor, that's going to be amplified. Ready? The compressor is not noisy. The guitar is noisy. Stuff before it is noisy. Which brings us to our next point, ladies and people. Placement of a compressor is just as important as the quality of that 
compressor. No matter how expensive that compressor is, if you put it in the wrong spot in the chain, it's going to be noisy. But we know that's not true because we just discussed this. <laughs> so what's happening is it's picking up everything that's behind you, everything that's behind it, everything that's behind the pedal, all the pedals behind it, all the cables, all the bad cables, all the good cables, whatever it is. Where I like to put my compressor is at the very beginning of the chain. However, however, right after my fuzz, meaning fuzz will always come first no matter what. The fuzz will always come first and the compressor is usually right smack next to it. The compressor pedal is the number two pedal for me because I want it to be before my overdrives. We're going to get to that in a second. I want it to be before my overdrives, but I also don't want it to affect my fuzz. Why? Because here comes our next point, people. A good quality compressor usually almost always has a good buffer in it or an eh buffer in it, but they almost always have buffers in it. I know for a fact the Wampler Ego has a buffer in it because if I ever put it first behind my fuzzes, it's going to mess with my fuzzes. And I also wouldn't want anything that changes my dynamics or that alters my dynamics before a fuzz. Because remember, we like to do volume down stuff with a fuzz. We like to do a lot of stuff with a fuzz, pick harder and stuff like that. What's going to happen with a compressor is it's going to level everything out unless you get one with a blend. Which brings us to our next point. This is also probably why you don't like compressors. It's because your compressor has two knobs. It has a level knob and a compressor knob. That's it, or a sustain, or whatever they want to call it. Level is, is adjusting the level, the volume, right? And the compressor is adjusting the amount of compression. It doesn't give you that much tailoring, or it doesn't give you the ability to blend your dry signal. What I like to do is what I'm doing right now is run half and half. Half of my dry signal is going through the compressor, you're hearing it, and the other half is being compressed a little bit high, as you can see. So, here's how it sounds without. I'm going to play a little funky number here. Here's with. And that just made it sound a lot better. Were the dynamics completely killed? Absolutely not. They were not. In fact, they were accentuated. So basically, I'm recommending you get a compressor with a blend knob. Because whenever you have a compressor, and there's nothing wrong with a Dynacomp, let's not get into this. Whenever you get a compressor with just a level and a compressor, it's really just on or not. While this and other good compressors that have a blend knob allow you to keep it and have it always on, which is what I do. Sometimes when I move to humbuckers, I tend to put the compressor down a bit when I'm using humbuckers because the humbucker itself was naturally compressed, but generally it's always on for me in my rig because it's not taking away the dynamics. In fact, it's adding, and it's also leveling out my extremely inconsistent playing. And I mean extremely inconsistent right hand. It's funky. But it's inconsistent. Let's get real, okay? I am very comfortable in my own skin, people. I know where my strengths are in life and where my weaknesses are in life. My right hand is very strong all the time. So it tends to be inconsistent. If you're gonna tell me that yours is 100, but you are a machine, impossible, because otherwise this wouldn't have been created. So same passage again, just to drive the point home. Another thing in the world of evens things out, a compressor does, 
is that whenever you're playing big chords, some notes tend to drown out. And what I mean by big chords, I mean those big complex chords that maybe have an open string in them or something like that. So here's, for example, in uh, an F major nine in the middle of the neck, right? Here's what it sounds without a compressor. One more time. You're not getting that open G when I have the compressor on. So these big chords will sound even bigger and they will, you will hear every single string and all of them will be equal in the effect that the chord gives. What I mean by effect that the chord gives, I'll give you an example. I'm going to play the same chord, but I'm going to start adding bass notes to it. That's what I mean by effect. This has nothing to do with compressor. It's just so you can understand what I'm saying. So I'm playing these three notes, right? We're just changing the bass note. So that effect is lost if you don't have all the strings ringing at a same strength. And finally, ladies and people, the point that I love the most, it just makes everything after it sound better. It's going to hit any pedal that you have afterwards with the same consistent level. Even when you're either not being level with your right hand or your left hand or whatever, or even if you're playing dynamically to where it's too low and it can't get really picked up by the overdrive, the nuances and stuff like that, it'll level out when it hits the overdrive, which is what we're about to do next. Also, you've heard a compressor called a compression sustainer, for example. It sustains notes longer. Here we go. Here's how it sounds with just a tube screamer. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pause here for one second and tell you that the Tube Screamer switch is the dumbest switch I have ever come across. Ibanez, you have failed since the late 70s. You have failed since the late 70s. Anyway. That's what it sounded like without the compressor. Now with, but then I'm gonna play also leads over it. So you want to sound like John Mayer and you're looking for the perfect $700 Marshall Blues Breaker from the early 90s. You're looking for a $6,000 Klon and you're looking for a $60,000 Dumble Steel String Singer. Right. However, why don't you start here? Because it's the compressor that's doing all the work, I assure you. I'm going to play up in the middle of the neck on the uh, neck pickup here so that we get those big John Mayer style, style stuff, right? First with just a tube screamer, then I'm gonna add the compressor. So the compressor is going to hold that note way longer. If you have a guitar that struggles a little bit with sustain, a compressor will help big time. It'll even things out for you. It'll help with sustain. 
Now, here's a word of uh, caution. Everything in life, ladies and gentlemen, you thought this was a lesson about compressors. Wrong. <laughs> this is a life lesson. Anything in moderation in life is fine. If we dime the compressor and we turn the blend off, essentially not letting any of our dry signal in, that's probably the sound you don't like. I'm going to play this now. A lot of people use that in like funk rhythms with a very dry, no reverb signal. It sounds all right. But that's probably what you think of. It's super squished and stuff like that. It's, it's not what you want. I'm going to do that for you. Well, I shall demonstrate. gets old, right? It's too compressed, it's too squashy, it's too, I mean, you can use it for chicken pig and stuff, right? A lot of country players do use that, and maybe here, and with the wrong guitar, but you know. But even chicken pickers and country players and stuff like that, they're not using the compressor that dime. They still want dynamics. So this could be the reason why you're either afraid of compressors, you don't like compressors, or you just shy away from them altogether. You think they're noisy, they're really not. They're just picking up anything that's behind them and amplifying it. You probably think it's just gonna be an extra squash that you don't need and it's gonna take away your dynamics. When used correctly with a proper compressor, a really good quality compressor, I mean, compressors should be, in my opinion here, Compressors should be 200 and above dollars. Anything below, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on, I'm gonna get killed. I know this, hold on. It should be near the $200 mark. It really should be, because otherwise the components inside are not gonna be worth your time. That really is, is, is my opinion. I think the Wampler Edu, I think the Wampler Ego is 200 bucks. I think this one is around that range, maybe a bit more. I know the Jackson Audio Bloom is a little bit over 300 bucks, but it's excellent. All these ones are really excellent. When used properly, especially if it's got a nice blend knob, some of them like the Ego has a tone knob because some compressors darken the sound. That also could be something you're afraid of. A good quality compressor will not darken your sound. And if it does, because of whatever chip they're using, it'll more than likely have a tone knob on it, like the Ego. So to reiterate again, as far close as the beginning as I can get the compressor is where it's gonna go. If my board has a fuzz, and you damn right it's gonna have a fuzz, it's going to be after it, directly after it. I want the fuzz to see the guitar first so that I can retain all these low volume and stuff like that type of dynamics and then the compressor comes in next. And then the rest of the board, including my wah. I like my wah pedal after. I like my wah pedal after my compressor because sometimes when I'm doing those choppy, funky rhythm or leads and I hit the string too hard, the compressor is gonna limit me, right? And the wah's not gonna overdrive. I haven't seen, I have yet to see a wah pedal that doesn't really overdrive in not a nice way, in a very trill, trebly way, especially in the toe down position, whenever you hit it hard. That helps with that. Ladies and gentlemen, I do hope you consider buying yourself a compressor, a good quality compressor with a blend preferably. And I really do hope you found this video helpful. We're gonna have a lot more how-to series. I've got a how-to walk coming up. I have a how-to univibe coming up. Oh, oh, oh my God, I have so many things coming up for you in the how-to series. And I love doing these videos. Please consider subscribing if you found this helpful. If you knew all the information that I've just told you and you've just wasted your time, like and share anyway. And also please subscribe because this channel needs it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for recommending I do a compressor. And until next time, thank you for watching.